Good morning, Facebook. Um, today is Friday, November the 22nd. Whoop, whoop. Um, as of right now, this is going to be slightly different just because having some technical difficulties with one of the things that I use, but without further ado, I am Fire Lotus. I do these chats Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on my page. Um, I do have another kind of show thing like this, uh, that's possibly going to be in the works on either random Saturdays or Sundays. Um, got that out of the way. Um, if you by any chance miss this, or if you don't have a Facebook and you still want to see it, always remember that the majority of all of my lives, I post on to my uh, YouTube shortly after it, but I have noticed something, so I am going to change that as of today. When I post the lives, the lives will actually be posted to my YouTube later on. Um, my time, it'll probably be about 6 or 7 o'clock um, when you will actually be able to view them, just because I'm trying to build that platform up too. Um, I did want to personally say thank you, everybody. Hello! Thank you, everybody, who has been joining my morning lives, um, who has been talking about it, who's been sharing it, who's been liking it. Thank you so, so much. Um, I want to eventually prove that you don't have to, well, pay for advertisement. I, I don't, personally, I don't want to pay for advertisement because I, myself, am annoyed of going on social media and being bombarded by social advertisements. So, but, um, yes... So these are definitely doing a thing. I'm so excited. Literally every single live has just getting better and better and better. Um, I do have a bunch of stuff in the works. I have ideas and topics that I'm going to bring up. It's just right now I'm currently doing more research on it. Because I don't like bringing up topics unless I know some about them. I wish I could know everything about them. But we all know how that, that, that won't work. Um... With that being stated, um, I do have a few interviews that I am in the works of talking to people about bringing them on. Uh, more than likely, they will be, like, basically, I'll eventually, somewhere in the live, I'll try to bring them on so you'll see them on the top of the screen. And literally do, like, a live interview. Um, so, yeah, and I have at least one, as of right now that I know of, I have at least one person that owns a business that um, I will be eventually bringing on to do a little thing. Um, I do have something planned for, um, New Year's. Just some stuff's in the works before that happens, but yes, always know there's always stuff in the works. Um, with that also being stated, if anyone does see this at any point in time, like my live said yesterday, I do take, um, on customers to do magic or tarot readings or oracle cards. But, just know that I'm not one of those people that are going to charge you an arm and a leg. I will work with you as much as possible. Also, I do what is called as the witches, uh, the witches payment, aka trade and bartering. Um, but, if you want to know more about that, check out my live from yesterday. Now, with that being stated, and I got that out of the way, um, I will be going over... Okay. Well, that's... Okay. There we go. So, I say I can't find the card, I'm going to be going over. I will be going over today's Oracle card um, a little bit later on, as long as this phone doesn't break. Oh, yay! I updated, and the update decided to take three hours, two hours. So, um, by the way, I did forget to do something, and I do this on all of my lives. For anyone who hasn't heard, which I'm pretty sure you have, um, this is sage spray the actual name is home blessing sage vibrational full moon charged potion um it is for all the people that either can't burn sage or don't want to burn sage and you can do this this is awesomely made by an amazing alchemist uh herbal alchemist um three sleepy eyes apothecary as always i will post a link below but y'all should totally check her out she has these she has florida water she has teas she has tinctures she has soaps. Check it out. I'm telling y'all, she's amazing. So, okay. Um, 
Like I said, I've been trying to update y'all on the movies that I talked about earlier. And I haven't really found out that much about Charmed, which also... Not Charmed, um, The Craft. I'm also still trying to find some more info on Hocus Pocus. Um, for anyone who doesn't, and I do want to know this if my, um, if y'all do watch this, um, the Vampire Diaries, they had the Vampire Diaries, and then they had the originals, and then of course there was a spinoff, which is Legacy. It's basically Klaus's, the original's daughter. Um, for anyone who hasn't checked that out yet, season one, you can tell that it was a new show, that they were trying to figure out where they're going. Totally check out season two. This last episode that I watched, that came on last night, but I watched it today, it made me cry at the very end. Tears of joy, but amazing. Okay, so, um, I did have some things to talk about. It's very weird because normally, and also since my normal routine of me doing this kind of has been sidetracked, and I'm still waiting for that to boot up. But, with that being stated, this is the secret project that I was telling y'all that I'm working on. And then, the back... Huh? Can you see it? Flutter Delice! Um, there's a lot of shit, though, that I will be adding to this. I just have to get it. Um, but for anybody who didn't know, yesterday's live, we went over, um, how hair has power and keeps power um it your hair is very very powerful um but actually today i wanted to talk a little bit about actually even in the witch culture um it's kind of a little tabooish um and that would be blood magic um and i'm pretty sure everybody at one point in time hold on i have to do something really quick but i'm pretty sure at every Resume. Sorry about that. Um, at every point in time, I'm pretty sure somebody has either A, even if you're a practitioner or not a practitioner, you have either A, came across blood magic, or you've seen TV shows, all that shit. Okay. For one, before I go into this, I am not suggesting in any way, shape, or form to self-harm or cut yourself to get blood. That is not what I'm saying in any way, shape, or form. So with that being stated, not to mention you're an adult. So if you do do that, you're, that's on you, not me. So with that being stated, females kind of have an upper hand. Um, and don't come at me when I say this. But due to the fact that their period, um, actually a lot of cultures, cultures, um, some religions, and I know a hell of a lot of paths, that actually that is the blood that you were supposed to share. I know plenty of... Um, witches who use their menstrual blood or their yeah menstrual blood um they'll return it back into the earth as an offering um they can use it in spells um <clears throat> in some hoodoo and voodoo there are some or not i'm not going to say hoodoo and voodoo i will say in some types of magic there are those actual spells it, they are kind of older but that they believed that if you really wanted a man and you were female, you were to mix a little of their menstrual blood, your menstrual blood, and their food. And basically, it would... It can kind of go 50-50. Traditionally, how, this, how the thing was, and the reason behind that is basically it's supposed to be you're binding that person to your blood. You're binding it to your love. Um, and the reason everybody, I'm pretty sure some people are like, well, why, what, what's up with blood? For one, vampires. Um... But the reason that blood is so important in the craft and the shit in normal life is because what is blood? Blood is literally our life source. Without blood, we'd, we'd be dead. Um, that's just how that works. Um, so with that, think about how, how um, practitioners or witches or people like me were like, you know, how using energy, manipulating energy. Liquor, please don't start this. By the way, if y'all hear a cat screaming bloody murder, I promise you he is perfectly fine. He throws temper tantrums because I won't let him in here when I do the live. But apparently I'm going to change that. Hold on. Got to grab him. Yo. Yo. Yeah, you're not alone. 
Now, just because you're in here does not mean you can wreak havoc while I'm doing this live. Sorry about that. By the way, um, liquor no longer fits him anymore. So, as of last night, he has been named Nightwalker. Mainly because he's like a little ninja in the middle of the night. Where if you walk, if you walk into anything that's dark and you can't see, you're going to get popped by him. So... And, interesting fact about cats, because I think somebody said they wanted to see a video about cats. Um, this particular cat is very special because when he was younger, um, we had a flea outbreak. And we didn't know it until it got to a point it was really bad. Um, he almost died. He was literally knocking on death's door, and I spent two days... Constantly, I have a reminder that still randomly goes off on my phone um, for every 30 minutes to give him a syringe of water. And I talked to... Now, before I say this, um, I do not worship the old ones, the gods and goddesses. I do not worship them. I do not strictly work with them, but I commune with them. Now, for anybody who... That'll be a slightly different conversation. But, um, hello everybody who's joining, but Licker, or aka who is now Nightwalker, is his new name, um, he was on death's door, to the point to where literally I thought I was going to have to bury him. And Freya, um, a goddess that has been with me since I've gotten down here to Florida when I had all the cats, um, I, she helps me watch over my cats, because I have uh, this one inside, and then I have Aphrodite and two of his brothers outside, and then I also have Magic and Stripes. Stripes, he's a male cat, so he kind of just wanders, but Freya, me and her are close, uh, especially when it comes to felines. But I prayed to her and asked her that, you know, if, if she would spare this one, then I would do everything in my power to spoil him and to make sure he has a great life. And two days later, he was actually, he started eating, and he went from starting to eat until the little furball he is now. Um, and it's very funny, too, because when I have cats, I don't like picking favorites. This particular one, though, he, he my buddy. He sleeps with me during the night. Um, when my partner gets home, he'll wait by the window and greet him. Um, he doesn't talk like Magic does. Magic, the other, uh, black and white furry kitten I have, she'll actually talk to you, as in, you can sit there and talk to her and she'll meow in response. Um, over and over again. It's really cool, actually. Um... But... There we go. Sorry, I'm trying to get everything situated so like I normally do. But, uh, yes. Um, he is my buddy. And, actually, it's really cool because most people don't know this. And I will get back to blood magic. Oh, yeah, I was talking about blood magic. Okay, last thing about cats and then back to blood magic. Um, he distracted me. Contrary to popular belief, you can train your cat. They are extremely smart. I have him when he is playing around and like when he's in that moment where he wants to attack everything that moves. I can actually go up to him and say love or calm and start petting him. And he's realized when I do that, I'm not trying to play with him. I'm trying to show him affection and he'll stop. And I can sit there and pet him and pet him. You know, eventually I'll have to repeat love when he starts getting a little bit hyper. And then as soon as I stop that, I'll be like, all right, go wild. And he'll stop, make sure, like, I'm done petting him, and then he'll just go wild. He's literally like my son. And I've raised a lot of cats. He, on the other hand, has literally like my son. I will feed him, I will spoil him, I know his meows, I know when he wants something to drink, I know when he wants human food instead of cat food, which he does not get very often. Um, I've also cooked for him. <laughs> um, but yes... So, since, like I stated before, my normal routine of how I do things have kind of been thrown in the back. A lot, actually. It's been thrown in the back a lot.
Oh, yay. You're not working like you're supposed to. Yippee dippy doo. That's what I want to hear. So, but yes, back to blood magic. Um, blood magic has been used throughout the eons, throughout the ages. Um, especially in Wicca, it is frowned upon, mainly because you're doing harm to yourself. Um, and honestly, I don't know that many other practitioners who do blood magic, and they don't really talk about it if they do, because it's such a taboo. And of course, with that, I mean, there I can see why there is taboos, because for one, you're using human blood. Which means, if you don't properly store it, or properly dispose of it, you can get hepatitis C, or hepatitis B, I think it's hepatitis B. You can get multiple things from that. So, if you were, or do, not suggesting you do, but if you do, um, then I would, for one, it'd be like getting a tattoo. Like, or getting a piercing. Do your research. Like, legit, do your research. Um, with that, now, for anyone who is a sprout, which, for anyone who doesn't know, sprout is the term that I've deemed the people that follow me that are new to the craft. I don't like using baby witch because, to me, it's kind of condescending and rude. Um, I don't like using newbie because that just sounds weird. Honestly, to me, newbie sounds cultish, and we're not trying to do that. So, sprouts also goes with the lotus, the plant, you know. But, with that being stated, um, I would not suggest doing blood magic at all. The reason that is, is because, like I stated before, if you're new, and even if you've been experiencing and practicing, make sure you know what you're doing, because if you use any spell with you, your blood, another person's blood, know that you are literally binding your energy, your essence, with that spell and or with that um, ritual. So what that means is, if you did a love spell to make someone fall in love with you, and you use both each other's bloods, for one, I personally don't like doing love spells. Um, I will do them, but I don't preferably like them, and I don't do the love spells to make people, to make someone, I will not do a love spell to make someone fall in love with you. Um, because, yeah, no, that's how you get stalkers and psychopaths and I knew I was gonna have to do that okay before I do that anyways um but yeah no you you don't want to do that like bad. bad 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 right not to mention when it comes to love magic there are hundreds upon hundreds of things other spells chants rituals that it doesn't bind you to a person and or it doesn't summon your perfect person. But what it does is it highlights everything about you to the opposite of whatever you're attracted to. I almost said opposite sex, but 2019, 2020. So whatever you're attracted to. Um, with that, with the whole like, oh, he's my soulmate or twin flame. Now, I do believe in twin flames and soulmates, but I don't always think or always associate them with with a intimate relationship you can have a soulmate and it be your best friend from a past life you can have a twin flame and it be your best friend it doesn't they don't twin flames and soulmates do not necessarily have to be you know the romantically involved um personally i've met somebody ironically he does share a similar name to my partner but um we, we're, we have a very, very strong connection to a point where he has freaked me out multiple times. One particular time, I'll actually go into it. Um, and this has never happened to me. Ever. That I can recall, nobody has ever done what this person has done multiple times. And, for anybody who says, this person that I'm talking about, he literally was not even in the same state that I was in. So, just think about that for a second. He wasn't even the state that I was in. But I was in the shower, and I was praying. I was going through some stuff. Um, I was in Alabama at this point, but I was going through a lot of things, a lot of new change, a lot of kind of chaos. I had a moment where 
everything I thought I wanted and knew wasn't that. So, like, complete rearrange of everything that was going on in my life. But I did a prayer to the divine, to the spirits, ancestors, lords, ladies, gods, and goddesses. And five minutes after I got out of the shower and, like, got dressed and walked outside, he had called me and then told me that they heard my prayer and they would answer it, which he was spot on. They heard it and it was shortly answered right after that. But he's done that multiple times. He's one of the only people that literally knows when I do magic. Um, but we have that connection. We have a very, very strong connection. And like I said, it, it's not romantic. It doesn't have to be romantic. Um, I have another theory that your twin flame or uh, soulmate could also be your brother or sister from another life. I know I've met people, I've met at least two people, that literally from the very instant that I met them, it was like they were my sister or brother. It was like I've known them, but it wasn't in like a friend way, it wasn't in a romantic way, it was like, you are my family. I don't know how, but you are my family. Um, and it, it it's so cool because I didn't tell them that when I first met them, but uh, as we started talking more, we realize that not only do we have things in common, our families and bloodlines have stuff in common, which kind of just blew my mind. I mean, like, what? And it, it, it's so weird, too, because people don't automatically think about that. They don't think of, you know, hey, well, what if this person is, you know... Because I do believe in reincarnation. I do believe in past lives. Now, do I automatically know what that is, what that means, or how that is? No, I do not. I do not at all. But I know that I have met people um, that have legit... I got the same response. For example, um... Tiptoe chick, Doris. Uh, there was one year, actually, she, we were going to meet, but something came up at the last minute, but, um, we had talked, and she had personally talked to me, so we were kind of on a personal base. Now, I, I'm not saying I was, like, her best friend in any way, shape, or form, but, um, I had a dream one time that, I, the dream's not important, but it was about her, and, uh, she was showing me something, and we were, like, hanging out, but it was her hair. Her hair is what mainly stuck with me. Her hair was almost like a peacock, how the peacock feathers are like colors and everything. That was her hair. So I was like, well, should I like, would this be weird if I'm like, hey, I, 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 I had a dream about you. And I was encouraged by some close people. It's like, you know, screw it. What's the worst that can happen? Do it. So I did. And I about fell on the floor when she responded because she said that basically she felt the same way and she believes that we at one point in time may have shared a past life. And it was so weird because up until that point I'd never thought that. I just knew that I was always drawn to her. And what I mean, almost attracted, but not, like I said, not in that way. I was just, everything about her drew me in. Which I'm pretty sure most people who watched, who have watched her videos will say the same thing. She was an amazing, amazing woman. Um, and just amazing. I could go on about her, but, yeah, blood magic. So, with blood magic, like I've stated before, it is literally... It's you in a bottle. Honestly, it is your essence. Blood is basically a almost a physical form of what energy would be. Um, that's also why it's linked with vampires, and that's why some people who do partake in blood say that it does get you high, but like a natural high. It also, if you've ever had a blood transfusion, I know a lot of people that stated that when they got their blood transfusion... They felt basically like they had had a shot of adrenaline. It 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 gave them life. It and now they're actually. I don't know if this is true because I've heard multiple things, but there was this new trend. It really wasn't new, but for some reason it kind of got sparked back up in the whole media frenzy thing. Um, that there are some companies that actually specifically get younger blood, teenage blood, basically, and they 
They're basically saying that if elderly people were to get monthly or certain amounts, doses of younger blood throughout a year, it can basically, quote-unquote, they apparently have evidence stating that it can literally start regenerating our organs and stuff like that. And I'm sorry, we're not meant to that. If we were meant to be immortal, if we were meant to live forever, then we would have naturally been able to. Are we? No. Why? Because... Everything has to die at one point in time. If not, then you have too many people, you have not enough resources. Oh, wait, kind of what we're going through now. But, ow! I don't know if y'all saw that, but Nightwalker just attacked me. <laughs> He's trying to tell me he wants outside, though. Hey, you're a cat. There's a bar, there's a thing of string. Have fun. Um... But blood magic is also extremely, extremely powerful, um, which is why I do want to make myself clear, if you don't know what you're doing, if you, if you even have a self-doubt of what you're doing, don't do it. Because blood magic, you, like I said before, there's a reason that in some traditions, um, magic tools, for example, some traditions state that you either use blood, saliva, for men, it would be our seed. Um, for women, it would be menstrual blood. But you use that and you anoint your items with it, your tools, your sacred tools of the craft, because it helps It helps bind you with that energy, which in the craft is what you want to do. So I personally, I do use blood magic. I, not all the time, and no, not what you think. I don't stand over a cauldron and slip my wrist and just have blood pouring down. Literally, normally, it's like a prick of the finger or a little scrape right here. Just, you don't need to fill up a chalice full of blood. Um, when I mean blood magic, I literally mean like you scrape your hand. That blood that's draining off. Wipe it on a leaf. Or get it on a leaf. Put it on a leaf. And then just offer it to the universe. It, it's, it, it's not wasting it. And I know that most people are going to look at me and be like, Are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, you kind of just lost me. But, like I stated, that works for me. And in these videos, besides facts and historical stuff, everything that I'm saying, it's stuff that I've either figured out, gathered, or it's stuff that works for me. Now, does that mean any of the stuff that I say, if you do it, it'll work for you? Will you stop trying to attack my hands? I'm being bullied by my cat. <laughs> Live on Facebook. But, um, you can do... And incredible things with blood as well. Um, but it it's a taboo. And I hate the fact that it's a taboo. Because it's in a way it's like. No I'm not going to. Yeah actually yeah I am. This is how my brain works. To me it it's some of the st stigmas. And will you calm down. Or you're going to go outside. I cannot be worried that you're going to attack me. Or jump on me at every move you make. Like you're doing now. I'm sorry I talk with my hands. But, I personally have one particular spell, and honestly this is one of the only times that I actually do do blood magic. It is a locket, and I did not create it, but, um, for anyone, this is the best example that I can give of what I'm talking about, the little necklace that I have that I've made, a locket, um, for anyone, it's like a honey jar, in a way. Just my blood version of one. Um, a honey jar, for anybody who doesn't know, it's it's almost like a mojo bag. It is something that you literally, as you're creating it, it almost becomes a living thing. Especially with magic. Um, mojo bags are the same way. Mojo bags, true mojo bags, you literally, they have to be fed. They have to be taken care of monthly. Normally, it's, um, I don't know about hoodoo bags, but I know candle bags and stuff. Normally, you would feed it around the full moon. Um... And you're probably asking, well, what the fuck's in it besides honey? Anything. It depends on what you're making it for. If you're making it for love, friendship, prosperity, you would add herbs, glitter, crystals, all types of things that would help bring that in. And basically what this is, or what a honey jar is, is basically it's a way, instead of doing, instead of doing a spell to get fast cash or something like that, this is kind of one of those things that just, it constantly brings it in. It constantly brings it in. Hold on. 
Yeah, you're a little bit too hyper to be in here. Go. Go run to the house. Swing from the blinds. But, um, and it's basically, which is also, I, I love the idea of these spells, but instead of doing that, oh, I want to win the lottery, or oh, I need this money to buy this check, or you want the job, or you want better friends in your life, healthier friends. This jar, the reason you say you feed it, and you feed it by burning a candle, a, a certain candle that you would also make to kind of match with that, but you burn the candle on it, um, and there are different techniques with this. This is just the one that I know. Um, you burn the candle on it, like, say, every new moon or every full moon. And it basically, it's constantly bringing it in. It's constantly bringing it in. Well, the blood spell that I have, it's a prophecy spell. And no, when I mean prophecy spell, I'm not saying, like, you know, take the Hollywood aspect out of it. But basically what it is is... The original spell was written for three days. For three days, when you do this, not everything you say or think, but the stuff that you really, truly want, and you use that manifestation, it happens. And it works. It's a very, very powerful one. Um, I actually had to train my brain before I even put it on, or before I finished, fully made it, to make sure that, because I have anxiety... So, that's also where Smoky Quartz comes in. I normally have it on, but I don't. For anyone who does have anxiety and does do magic, and you're worried about, you know, those anxious, those annoying thoughts that everybody has with anxiety, wear Smoky Quartz. Um, not only will it help ground you, but it also can be programmed to filter almost like a dream catcher to where your bad thoughts go into it and your good thoughts, you know, go out. Basically, the stuff you want manifested, it will go through it, and the stuff that wasn't, it'll kind of get trapped in there. Now, with that smoky quartz, or any crystal, honestly, that you use on a regular day basis, or a lot, it does have to be cleansed. There are different ways, sage, salt, salt, um, with salt and or salt water, or like a salt bath, do your research, because some crystals or minerals can dissolve, they can be toxic, they can become toxic, they can break off. Do your research. They can dissolve. So do your research with that. But um, there are multiple ways of charging and cleansing crystals. You can bury it in the earth for three days. You can burn sage. You can use fire. You can use water. You can use wind. Literally all of the elements you can use them. But um, back to the thing. The spell though is black candle. I'm not going to actually say the incantation to it. But a black candle which I tweak that to where... The black candle that I was originally using when this was made is actually in the necklace. So basically what I do is when I do do it, I safely add a little blood to it, say the thing that I say to wake it up, and bam. Now the main tweak that I did is since it's in a locket and it almost works like a honey jar or a mojo bag and it's constantly doing, um, it, it lasts longer than three days. It just depends on, in a way... How much I feed it. Um, but I don't. I only use it when I have to. Because it does take a lot out of you. Um, for anyone who has. If you've done an oracle reading. Or tarot reading for the first time. Or if you do something to where. I'm trying to give you an example. For the people who have never done stuff like this. But. I, perfect freaking example. Doing magic. Or doing tarot cards. Or oracle readings. Anything to do with your personal energy. It's like walking in Walmart for five minutes. You can walk in there just for five minutes. But by the time you get out to your car. Literally all life and energy that you had. Was just completely sucked out of you. And you want to go home and crash on your couch. Honestly that is what it's like. That is why they say. And I say that if you are doing full-on rituals, if you are casting your circles, not only do you need to know how and what you're doing, aka what you're communing with and, you know, that, but you also need to be able to understand and to have your energy, your body's energy, up to where you can fully continue with your rituals. Because like I have stated before in um, a YouTube video, my first magical experience... My first true magical experience, I opened myself up way before I was ready to. And when I mean I opened myself up, I tried taking in the goddess, not knowing what I was doing. I was doing just a simple ritual, but when I released the energy in the goddess format, or the goddess stance, which is 
basically you stand up and you hold your arms up like this. That's the goddess, you're releasing energy, and then for the god, you would do like this. But it's to help you ground and to release any excess energy that you still have. Because doing magic, doing magic, especially in rituals with circles, or even trance magic, some magic, it can, it, it, I don't like using the word high, but it gives you a natural buzz. You feel great. Now, with that, for people who don't ground or center themselves after that, because you are altering your mind, and that's the reason you have to ground and center yourself, is so, for one, it's a way of telling your, your mind, body, and spirit that, hey, you're no longer in ritual mode. Come back to the earth. But you can have headaches from it. Um, to anybody who does do spells... Big or small, if you're beginning, I would suggest eating. Do not do magic on an empty stomach. And I know that sounds really fucking weird. But do not do magic on an empty stomach. Now, I'm not saying go to McDonald's or go somewhere and, like, shove a lot of junk food down your mouth. Now, with that, I'm not saying you have to eat healthy and all this other stuff. Because, yes, in a perfect world... That is technically what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to watch what you eat to make sure your diet's healthy and everything. But we don't live in a perfect world. And we live in a world where a salad from a restaurant is like $10 when a cheeseburger is a dollar. I know that's slightly exaggerated, but you understand what I mean. It's easier to get unhealthy food than it is to get healthy food this day and age. But try eating something. Um, preferably sweet or... Honestly, I don't know if they did research, but in the Harry Potter movie, when he went against the, um, Dementor, and the professor gave him chocolate, the sugar, th actually, no, wait, that is, that, that's actually kind of medical, because it would be like your sugar dropping, you get weak, yeah, actually, no, yeah, that makes sense, so, chocolate, something sweet, um, but yes, I would preferably, honestly, what I do if I'm doing something outside, aka ritual, I do practice inside, and I do most of my spells inside. That's a recent thing, <laughs> due to the agoraphobia. But, um, when I do practice stuff outside, I will try to... Normally, I'll try to eat some type of sandwich, like a peanut butter sandwich, or I eat meat. I'm not a vegan, so a ham sandwich. Um, but yeah, like, don't do it. Do not do a circle if you're sick. Don't... Honestly, don't do... Ma now, when I say don't do magic, what do you mean by that? Because um, there are magic that I do, literally, all you need is a piece of paper, a pen, and a candle. Or a lighter. You don't even need the candle, just a lighter. And again, it's about your intention. And you write everything you want. Now, when I mean this, I'm not saying you want money, you want this, you want this, you want this. I'm not talking about materialistic shit. I'm mainly talking about, like you want a better day, or the small things that you want. I'm not saying this is going to work, or if you do this, you can win the lottery. And if you do, well, hello, it worked for you. But but you can write small stuff down. And I always go back to fire because fire lotus, but my main element is fire. My birth element is fire, and I love fire. Love it. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It is... It's completely chaotic and completely controlled at the same time. It can give life and take life away at the exact same time. Example A, volcanoes. Without volcanoes, we wouldn't have islands. That's probably not true, but you don't understand what I mean. Um, but yeah, with that... Um, ah, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. Eating. Make sure you do eat something. But with the writing stuff down, today, if you can, at any point, if you've actually w gotten to this point in the live, or if you just stumbled upon now, get a piece of paper. It literally can be any type, preferably a blank piece. Like, don't have any type of writing on it or any drawings on it. I mean, you can. But um, sit down and think of five things. Five small things. Small, not big, not like a new car, but five small things that you would want in your life, say, by the end of this month. There you go. Because I don't like... Normally, when it comes to spells and magic, you can put, like, you want it by this date, but honestly, the universe don't work that way. You'll get it when you get it, or you'll get it when you're meant to get it. Um, but five things down on a piece of paper, 
Um, you can do it in sentences like, I will, I manifest, I wish to manifest this in my life. Me, I just write it down, like, love, friendship, happiness, joy, stuff like that. Um, write it down on a piece of paper. And hold the paper for a while, you know, actually, in your head, visualize and think. And actually picture not only you receiving this, but also ways that this stuff can get to you. Um, and then burn it. Go outside or use a safe bowl and burn it. Now, if you do burn it, because I'm about to tell you the ways that with the elements that you can use this or do this, um, you can burn it. If you burn it and you want to normally, or if you want to try it, normally when I burn stuff, I say, um, I ask the energy of fire, which basically is transformation, um, basically breathe, I call upon fire to set the spell free, and I call upon air to breathe life into it. And basically, as it's burning, you're invoking fire, because it's, it's basically, and what I mean by releasing it is, you've written the energy and the spell on that paper. By burning that paper and turning it into ash, the energy of that manifestation and your thoughts get released. Then you call upon air to send the message up to the gods. Now, what you do with that is, if you do burn it, try to collect the ashes once they're cooled down. If you can collect the ashes once they've cooled down, hold them in your hand, think about everything that was on that list, call upon the air. Um, how I call upon the air is I'll call and then I'll whistle. That's also a type of magic that they used to use on ships, which is called whistling up the wind, and it works. Um, and then just release the ashes. And then don't think about it. Right? Okay, if you don't want to do that, you can keep it and tuck it somewhere in your room or in a book on a bookshelf to where you know where it's at, but you'll forget about it. Out of mind, out of sight. And then you can also use a stream. Um, a stream that's flowing away from you. You can use that. Um, and honestly, modern day, you can use your toilet. And I'm not joking. I'm legit serious. If you want to, you could totally use your toilet on that. But... If you do that, keep track. If you do start doing magic, or if you do do magic, start keeping track. You don't have to have a like in-depth journal, but start a little list of, I did so-and-so this. And then, if it does manifest, then write back and say, this is how it manifested. This is what happened. This is how long it happened. And if it doesn't, then go back and look at it and be like, why? For one, also, not everything that you do in magic is going to work. I'm sorry, it's not. Not every spell, there have been hundreds, if not thousands, I'm not going to say thousands, but there have been at least over a hundred spells that I've done. Small charm spells throughout my entire life of practicing, and are the entire time that I've been practicing. And I've been practicing for 16 going on 17 years now. So, um, and actually, Samhain, this Samhain was either my 16th or 17th year. Um... And the only reason I go on Samhain is because Samhain has been one of the only times that... Or Samhain, when I was 17, was when I actually did a initiation um, with the person that I was with. And the type of craft. Um, but yeah, not all of your stuff is going to work. And that doesn't mean you did something wrong. Oh my god. I cannot express that enough. If you do something in magic and it doesn't happen... You did nothing wrong. Don't get it in your head. Self-doubt is the number one killer of magic. And the reason I'm saying that is because I struggle with it on a regular day basis, which is also why I've been coming up with certain rituals, face paint, um, or warrior paint, and then necklaces. There are certain things that I do to also help me. I also do have certain times where I will not practice magic due to where my mental health is. Um... Mental health, even if you do have problems, I hate using that word, but if you do have things, and if you don't, your mind state, again, like I've stated before, your emotions, your logic, your body, and your soul have to be perfectly balanced to really do magic to where it will manifest. Now, the reason I said magic does not always work and do not associate it with that with you did something wrong is... Maybe you're not supposed to manifest that, or maybe that's not what, you know, the universe has intended for you. Um, and it's so weird that I've mentioned past lives 
our past lives and stuff was brought up was because I believe in past lives, but when it comes to destiny and fate, I don't know if I do. Like, I think when it comes to destiny and fate with me, I believe that some things are set into stone. An example of that would be anything that you've done in life, and I know there are some, at least there are a few people that's done this, to where there were there was one thing that you could, there was like two choices, but there was one door, right? Say the craft, for example. Um, if you, say you picked up the craft and you started it and then you stopped and you're like, eh, you got a weird feeling or something and you stopped. And then five, ten years down the road, you start practicing again. That's what I mean by that. It's those things that even though you think you're far away from those choices or that choice or that object or that subject or something like that, you're far away from it, but yet it keeps coming back to you. It's like, liquor, please stop. I do not want to have somebody calling PETA on me thinking I'm abusing you. Thank you. See, stop. Um, but... Oh my god, cat. Yeah! Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm trying to organize my thoughts again. Past life's fate, there we go. I believe some things are set in stone. AKA, no matter how many turns and wobbles you make through your journey, it still pops up. It's like the the people who have, um, or the psychic mediums, or the some psychic mediums that I've read about, or psychics or mediums or gifted people. Um, some of them, once they realized they had their gifts, they tried to walk away from it completely. They stopped using it, they ignored it, and let me tell you, it doesn't go away. <laughs> It came back with revenge. Um, and that's what I mean. There are certain things that it's destined to happen. There are certain people in my life to where literally I have sat down. This also kind of throws some... And it's very weird. Now I'm thinking about it. I really don't have a life. Anyways, I've actually sat down and put it together of how I've met certain people. For example, um, my ex who lived in Lineville... Um, I probably never would have met him. It's very weird because I had talked to somebody that he eventually had talked to, which eventually, technically our conjoined ex that we didn't know at the time actually led us to one of another, one of each other. And then a guy that I met in Walmart, and I'm still friends with him. I'm not going to mention any names. I met this guy in Walmart, right? He came up to me and was like, I love your pentagram. And I was younger, so I think I was like 16, so like, yeah, I froze and was like, your people are talking to me, what? No, it doesn't. Huh? Oh, sorry, I understand. But, um, I understand what you meant, sorry. Um, but yeah, I pieced them all together, and with this particular one, we met in Walmart. We said a few words. That was it. And it was very weird, too, because the entire time through Walmart, we kept running into each other. And then when me and my mom checked out, he was with his mom and his sister that checked out. Right? So I was like, oh, okay, you know, cute guy, amazing, mesmerizing eyes. But, eh, that was cool. That'll probably never happen again. All right. A month and a half later, how he did it, I still have no idea. A month and a half later, he messaged me on the yearbook when I used the yearbook. Um... So, yeah, that, but, actually, if I wouldn't have met him, and been at his house, and had access to a computer at the point in time, I wouldn't have been on my, my space when my ex had messaged me, before we got together. So, see, I've literally sat down, and I'm like, okay, well, if I wouldn't have went, if I wouldn't have done this that day, then I wouldn't have done this, and I wouldn't have met that, and then I wouldn't have met that, and I wouldn't have met that, and I wouldn't have met that. And literally still, to this day, I do it. I, I love doing it because it shows me, in general, it's just like, wait, everything is connected. Like, there are things that are connected. And it's insane. But most people don't, like, they're like, oh, well, it's not faded. No. Now, with that, and it's, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out what I believe in it. But that's one of the reasons you use, um, again, I'm going to throw it out there. Astrometrics, this amazing app 
which actually now that's what I was originally going to do. Thank you for that. Astro Matrix, it's a free app. Um, you can subscribe to it and you get more, but for everything that's on there that is free, holy shit. Amazing, y'all should totally check it out, and I will definitely do a link in the description below. But the reason Astro Matrix is so phenomenon is because... Okay, I read that one yesterday. So I'll read this one soon. Okay, but um, if you've ever wanted a personal horoscope, Astro Matrix, it uses your natal chart, or aka your birth chart. And for people who don't know what that is, that is literally a snapshot of the sky at the exact moment you came into this world. With that, and with all the zodiacs and all the planets that we have that are in the mix with it, I'm still trying to learn astrology. But this app helps tremendously. Um, it basically gives you a personal horoscope. Um, it gives you a quote of the day. It gives you a card of the day. It gives you a number of the day. It gives you what aspects each planet's in. And the next one that we will be looking out for, because like I read yesterday... Um, which I should have waited until today. As of right now, um, the sun is in Sagittarius. And then as of November the 26th until December the 20th, Venus is in Capricorn. And you're probably asking me, well, what the hell does that mean? Like I stated, I read this one yesterday. Um, I read the one that actually came into effect today, or is going into effect today, which is the sun in Sagittarius. So check out the video or the app for that. Um, I will also go ahead and post a link. And then I will read you what is happening on the 26th. I so need a secretary. Like, what? So need one. Oh, okay. There we go. Now, there's the app to anyone who wants it or is curious about it. That's Astro Matrix. They also have a Facebook as well. I mean, a uh, Instagram. But, if this would work. Okay, Venus and Capricorn. I'm not going to read it all, so I'm going to read... It's only two paragraphs. Why not? Venus is now, and now again, this is not until, this is, this isn't until November the 26th. Venus is now open in Capricorn. Venus is now in Capricorn, where it joins Saturn, which recently moved into its home sign of Capricorn a few days ago. Normally, this placement adds a great deal of seriousness to your relationships, and with it conjunct to Saturn... And intentionally, you may feel more responsible, responsibility in your personal relationships, perhaps even feel as if it is a burden. I already feel that. <laughs> you will be more restraining and reserved in displaying your emotion, your emotional side, which may help if you are feeling very heavy, heavy dealing with significant others. Be careful not to bury your emotions too deep, otherwise they may come out impulsively in a negative, angry way. So, but that's basically what that app does. And again, I will always share it and talk about it because it's free. Who doesn't like free stuff? Everybody likes free stuff. Not to mention you learn a lot from it. Um, now, with that being said, I am about to read the tarot card. I'm also going to do another no-no, which is smoke a cigarette on the side. Because I'm still trying to fix my vape. So, and I know some people don't like smoke, so I'm trying to be respectful, but I need my nicotine. But, um, Astro Matrix, it literally is, and I'm, this is not sponsored in any way. Um, I have talked to the creator, but it's not sponsored. Um, but it's just an incredible app. And, like I said, if I come across any website or app that I know works, and I know it's great and can lead you in that direction, then I will express it. Now, since that said, I will be going over the Oracle card. If this phone 
that I'm using to read the card doesn't die. And then I have some actual magic techniques, a magic technique to go over for the uh, for the sprouts. For the sprouts or for the people that's just kind of curious to see what magic's all about. And with the technique that I'm going to be talking about and show you, you don't need a pentagram, you don't need candles, you don't need anything. You already have everything you'll need. Well, you may need quiet time. But, with that being said, for anyone who doesn't know, I've been breaking down the Halloween Oracle deck. I also need to make a note to do that. Put a poll. So, I have been breaking down the Halloween Native American... Native American? Wow. Another deck. I've been breaking down the Halloween Oracle deck from, well, since I started doing these videos. Um, and I believe we are on the 22nd one. The 22nd one, I believe. But, without further ado, and I will... I know I keep saying this. I will have that poll up on my page later on. After this deck, um, I'm going to leave it up to y'all. I will be doing this poll on my Facebook page and my Instagram page. But if you want the Spirit, the Medicine Will, the Spirit of the Will Oracle deck, or, which like I've stated before, for anyone who, if y'all do pick this, just know that we will dedicate ourselves to it because it will be an entire tarot deck. Which is... The Tarot Green Witch Tarot deck. Um, it's actually the only deck tarot deck that I have. And then I have two Oracle decks. Well, I have a partial Vampiric deck. But that's a very, very old one. It's the very first one that I have. Anyways, without further ado, people. Card of the day, a.k.a. alphabetically, is Scrying. I love that picture for some reason. Which is also intuition. So, without further ado, let's get it going. Soften your eyes, begin the trance. Whole worlds are opened, begin the dance. Now, for y'all who don't know, there's also an app. If you lose the booklet, there's an app that you can download in the app store. It does cost like two or three bucks. But... You can have it on any of your devices and as many devices as you want. It has the entire book with all of the cards. You can do readings. You can do one reading, two readings, and three card readings. And you can also save those readings and also email them. Amazing app. But, scrying and the divination techniques are seeing... Hold on. Sorry, I got a text message. Okay. Now! Sorry about that. But, um, each of the cards have, like, this small little saying at the beginning of it. Anyways, scrying is the divination techniques of seeing unconscious images... Or images from the divine or supernatural appear upon or within a surface. People scry into a crystal ball, black mirror, water, even the surface of ice. It is a very ancient technique and one traditionally enchanted on Samhain, Halloween. You can also use fire to scry. The key to efficiently, effectively scrying and being as relax the keys to effective scrying are being as relaxed as possible minimalist possible distractions basically lock yourself in a room to where you can't be bothered by sounds or anything like that um distractions soften your glaze and soften your gaze and allowing basically clear your mind the enemy the enemy of effective scrying is distraction, a.k.a. a cat meowing at your door. Um, 
Bup, bup, bup. The enemy of effectiveness scrying is distraction, both from inside and out. Turn off your phone, electric light, anywhere you can see them. Any music and... Now, with the music, that's a 50-50 because I actually interpret, incorporate modern music into a lot of my spells, rituals, and rites. Liquor! Nightwalker, stop! You are okay, you're not alone. Go play. But, back to this. Um, but yeah, I do use music, and you can also use lyrics for spells. But, if you're scrying outdoor, okay. Turn off any, any music, and if you're scrying outdoor, take the time to settle into the environment and listen to all the noise so that your mind will not need to break its focus later. It is also vitally important to settle your mind as much as you can. Now, for the Aries out there, like me, um, traditional meditation, or for the fire signs out there, traditional meditation is extremely hard for us because our minds are constantly go, 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 going. So, you do not have to sit down and do the lotus position on meditation. You can take a walk, that's meditating. You can bike, that's meditating. Anything that basically to where you can ease your mind. With scrying, you can use fire, you can use a, you can use a cup of coffee. If you do use water, I have learned that it... Hold on. Now, come over here and lay down, please. Yeah, you're purring. Now, come lay down. Sorry about that. He's going through it today. <sighs> Regular, if you regularly meditate, you may wish to use those techniques, or otherwise you can simply shut your eyes and focus on slowing your breath. This is usually very effective. If you have a specific question for the scrying medium... Scrying medium, state it up front. Then once you feel relaxed, turn your focus inward. Imagine pulling your energy within you and focus on the third eye point. The, the chakra point on the center of your forehead just above the eyebrows. Right here. Right there. Third eye. Will you stop? You're not going to be able to run around if you come in here. And if you do, your butt's going to go right back outside. Sorry about that, y'all. Imagine pulling your energy within, focusing on your chakra, and imagine opening it. Then gaze in a, in a soft, unfocused way at your scrying surface and simply allow images to form and observe that what present itself to you. What presents itself to you. Do not... Encourage your rational mind. This is about receiving, not thinking. Should you pull the scrying card, I suggest you trying it for starters. It also indicates that you may wish to develop your intuition further and not rely solely on the logic part of your mind for all the answers. True wisdom takes a balance of logic and imagination and intuition for true wisdom. And that is so true because... It, we get so caught up on, um, especially if, depending on what type of background you grew up in, but when we hear things over and over again, especially, and this is also one of the theories um, of why kids have so many, why kids are more easier and in tuned with um, the natural world around them, or in some cases, the supernatural world around them. Um, which, honestly, if you think about it, magic's not actually supernatural. It's just natural. But, um, when we are kids, it's a blank slate, right? Most people encourage kids to use their imagination. That imagination is what will help you more than anything connect with the divine and listen to your intuition. And the reason that is, is because when you're a kid, when you see something, your first reaction is, oh, that's fake, that's not real, that can't be real. No, you believe it. Right off the bat, you believe it. That's that's how humans are. I mean, that's how kids are. That innocence, in a way. 
that not innocence, but that well, you know how you were when a kid, like. With me, when I was a kid, I don't care who you were. You could be the freaking president of the United States. I would still believe in what I just saw. I don't care if you did or not. And with that, as we get older, like, we start going to school and then elementary and then middle school and then high school. But through that process and as we get older and more responsibilities happen, you have a lot more people telling you to get your head out of the clouds, stop daydreaming, you know, come back to reality. That in itself is what kills and helps hide your psychic abilities, your natural abilities that everybody on this godforsaken earth has. Um, and to really, truly get back, honestly, doing magic or becoming a practitioner, honestly, in a way, that's what it is. It's getting back to your your inner child, getting in touch with your inner child because your inner child needs it. That's why when a lot of people like me, for example, I have trauma, the people that do have trauma, that's one of the reasons that finding their way to the craft, I believe it helps them is because in the craft or in spirituality and in magic, you have to be in balance with every aspect of you, your inner child, your inner demons, all of that. And to really, truly become fully balanced, which I hope and pray I will achieve in this lifetime. I don't think I will, but I hope I will. Um, it, it takes daily work to open your chakras and to keep them open. It does take daily work. Now, saying that, I'm not saying you have to meditate every single day and to visualize your chakras opening. If that works for you, then fuck yeah, go do it. But for the people that don't have the time or don't, there are small things that you can do throughout the day when you're taking a shower. Visualize the water changing each color of the chakras, right? So, the root, all of them, all those colors. Imagine, one by one, the water changing to that color and bathing your entire body in it and cleansing you, right? Now, as you're doing that, also, when you use shampoo and soap and you're scrubbing, you know, sudden it up, getting all soapy and shit, imagine all the negativity, all the gook, all the ilk of the prior day or of that day. Imagine it being, you know, kind of scrubbed off, not really scrubbed off of you, but it releases an attachment. It gets loose, right? And it's being trapped in the bubbles. And then when you wash off and visualizing, if you have to, black stuff pouring off of you. Here's something that most people don't know. I actually use black paint. Um, when I do do a cleansing shower or, um, not really a bath, but a shower, I will, there are some times in some cases where I will actually paint myself or pour certain colors of paint all over me. And what that is and what that does is it helps me visualize. And see, that's a technique that I don't hear people say uh, you know, to help with your visualization, because in magic, visualization and intention are the two number one things, and intention goes with manifestation, just like, um, visualization goes with manifestation, if you can visualize, if you can visualize very well, and as long as you know how to set those intentions, if you use those two, it'll add up to manifesting, and you will have anything you want in your life, I'm not saying anything, um, because, I mean, if magic worked like it did in the movies and like Harry Potter, I would probably be in my dream house right now. Am I? No. But that's okay because I have a roof over my head, a floor under me, a floor under me, and walls on the side of me. So, but, yeah. Wow, I went over a lot in this video. Um, and it, Oh, it's 11-11. Second time. Second time. I did this yesterday. What? What? Sorry, y'all. I'm starting to get, starting to act more and more of myself. And I personally, I love it. I really do. Um, but yes, the technique that I was talking about, or that I had mentioned about how you can start practicing today, if you wanted to. And how you do that is... If you're watching this, and if you can, stop what you're doing, 
Put your hands together like this and rub it. Just rub your hands together. Rub your palms together. And then after a few minutes of you rubbing your palms together, slowly pull your hands apart. Right? Now that feeling that you feel between your palms, that is energy. That is magic. True magic. Now, with that, and if you, because I have had some people like, well, what's the first, what's a great technique to start off with first? And I'm about to tell you. If you are new, or if you have been practicing for a while and you just want to kind of refresh your brain, right? We're not going to have this issue today, buddy. Please. You've already acted up a lot in this video. And I don't feel like getting up and locking you out and then letting you back in later on. Um, but, do like this. Literally do like that. And then, what you're going to do is basically rub them together. And you're going to form your hand like a ball, right? And the energy in, your, in between your palms, you're going to visualize... You can use your favorite color, but in visualize there's a ball there, right? And see how big you can get that ball, right? Now, the more and more you do that, simply, just simply like visualizing it, because the better you can visualize that ball, the better it's going to do. Now, once you get to a comfortable point, and you've done this multiple times, then I would, or actually, this is actually one of the first real kind of magic things that I've done, um, and it was not really my teacher because I didn't really have a teacher, but she was the first person that I could go to. And she's also the first person who talked my mom or explained to my mom that what I was going down wasn't devil worshiping or evil. But um, she taught me that technique and that technique, everybody, I'm pretty sure other practitioners know. But with that and once you do that... um. And once you have it to where you can actually like fully picture it, the next step I want you to do is think of somebody who is sick. It could be like, say they, they've been having back problems, right? Or they just have a cold. And visualize that bubble of energy. And you can, you can think about love and like happy thoughts as you're doing this. And then kind of, once you get to a point where you think it's big enough, like do like that, right? And it's flying away, it's this little bubble. Then, as you do that, imagine in your head that that bubble finds the person and pops over them. And it just, the color that you chose, rains all over them. And that's healing. That's magic. Um, and that was the first type of real magic without spells that I've done. And when it comes to magic, you don't need spells. You don't have to use spells. You can do just pure energy work. Pure energy magic. Um, but also with that, you know, but with that, the reason I picked that particular technique is because that's a good technique and it's not something like I mentioned earlier in this live blood magic. That's not something you start off with as you're just now picking up the craft that no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, you could, but you don't know what you're going to do. And like I stated before, blood is a very, very powerful and it needs to be handled in safety ways, too. There's a lot of safety that comes with that. But that is a great and one of the best techniques that I could tell you on how to do that. And basically do it every day. Um, and if you want, and for the people who are interested in this, try that every day for 30 days. And then try the spiritual challenge for 30 days. Which is, for the people who don't know, um, I did not create it. I don't remember where I got the idea from, but I've got a video of it. Basically, for a 30-day period, set aside time. I normally do it when I first get up in the morning time and I have my first cup of coffee. Um, to where you literally, you're alone, you're drinking your coffee, you're relaxed and everything, but you literally talk to your ancestors, talk to your friends, talk to anybody that who that has left this earth. Talk to them like I'm talking to you right now. Now, the reason I am asking you to do this is because what you're doing in those 30 days, and hopefully you'll continue to do it, but you are helping your ancestors and the universe come up with y'all's type of communication, basically. Because 
what would work for me is not going to work with you. What would work for you is not necessarily going to work for me. But what that does is it also helps you and your ancestors or your lineage, your bloodline, kind of, it, it helps you hone that in. And I, I guarantee you, you will get results of the 30-day challenge. Now, with that being stated, I'm not saying that, you know, one of your ancestors are going to appear in front of you or slam a door or something like that. But what I realized when I did this was after I sat down with them, and normally, if you can, five to ten minutes, and just literally talk to them like you're talking to, like they're just sitting right next to you. Um, but what I learned by doing this is over time, like, you'll get small signs. And normally what I've realized is those signs will remember you or remind you of the person that you were talking to. Um, for example, if you drive a lot and you do it and then you start your car and you start going to work or going to your journey, wherever you got to go that day, and you turn on the radio and the moment you turn it on, that song, there's a special song that plays that reminds you of that person. That is Spirit's way of saying, hey, we hear you. Spirits can hear us. Ancestors can hear us. And when I mean ancestors, I cannot stress this more. I do not mean that you have to have, and I, I will say this again, you do not have to have at any point in your family line anybody that legit actually practiced. And honestly, 16th, 15th century, like when the actual witch trials were going on, it's going to be really, 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 really hard to even prove that they actually did practice what we consider today witchcraft. Now, with that being said, y'all have to remember that what we consider witchcraft today, honestly, it's very different from what was back then. Because back then, honestly, what they would consider witchcraft would honestly just be modern medicine, honestly, in a way. Working with herbs. Will you stop? No, if you start biting, I will put your ass outside. I know I have a lot of dangly jewelries and necklaces, but they're not for you to play with. No, no, they're not. No. But, um, you don't have to have a practitioner ancestor. And for the people that's like, well, I was, you know, my family's very religious. Um, like I said before, I was born and raised Southern Baptist and then Pentecostal. And then I came out of the broom closet shortly after that. But the reason that I stated that is because my grandmother and my aunt, my grandmother passed away last October, and my aunt passed away this Father's Day of this year, they were Christian. They did not believe in all of this. But I believe that when you die and your spirit ascends, you're, you're, you leave this thing you also leave behind those human thoughts, which is, oh, well, they don't believe in my religion or my spiritual views, so I'm not going to be able to contact them because that goes against what they believed when they were alive. That's not how it works. Or at least I don't believe that's how it works. At all, honestly. Um, sorry, I have to check something. But, and the reason I believe that Hello, everybody that is joining me. Hello, hello. Um, and I do just want to say that I do these lives every day on this page, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, but yes, for everybody who doesn't, this is uh, Nightwalker, recently named Liquor, but I just changed it. But back to what I was saying. I believe that, you know... Like I said, I felt my grandmother, and I felt my aunt. Actually, my aunt, I felt my aunt stronger than I felt my grandmother, which is insane, because me and my aunt, we had a lot of crazy moments where we never talked for like six years. Um, but one particular day, I walked out of my craft room after I had just was talking to um, her and my grandmother, and right after that, my entire hallway smelled, I'm not going to say what the actual plant was, but it reminded me of my childhood. It literally threw me back to all the time. See, when 
when I was younger, and I say it was before my my entire family, it's before they all lost their shit. Um, we would normally always meet at my Aunt Tammy's. And for the holidays, especially for Thanksgiving, she had, you know, the candles that you can get from Walmart, the pumpkin spice set candles for like, I think it's like five or ten dollars. She would have like four sets of those all throughout her house. So when you walked in, it literally felt like you just got punched in the face with fall, right? And then, oh, I realized I didn't know that. Okay, so I learned something new. Oh, no, it's okay. And, sorry, um, I just started the watch thing in this group, and I didn't know that the comments that you comment on there won't actually show up on this one, so I'm sorry for that, but I will try to... Will you stop eating my necklace? Thank you. I will try to make sure I'm keeping up with everybody. Um, Al, that's your teeth. But, it threw me back to my childhood, and that was validation right there. That was Spirit's way of saying, we hear you. Like, we completely hear you. Um, but I'm not even going to lie. When my aunt and my nanny passed away, like, it shook the very foundation to my spiritual beliefs. Because I just kind of always assumed that if that were to happen, like, I, they would show up and I would see them. That hasn't happened. I haven't even dreamed of them. But I have had small moments where, with me, it's mainly scents. I wind up smelling either perfume or cologne or just random smells. Which is very weird because when I was younger, I used to be able to see spirits until I did a meditation that... It was an advanced meditation that I thought I was ready for, and I wasn't ready for it at all. Hmm. But, um, so yeah, the 30-day challenge, it does work. The 30-day spiritual challenge. And again, you technically, you're not walking out of any of your... If you are religious, you're technically not walking out of any of them. True enough, it does state in the Bible that ghosts aren't real. And if you have anything to do with associating with ghosts or magic or anything like that, you're a demon and devil worshiper. But in order to believe in the devil, you have to believe in what? The Christian or biblical sense. Because witches and pagans don't really have a devil. Like, yeah. Oh, sorry. You were licking yourself. I was about to say, leave the lavender right. And I have homsis alone. But those two techniques alone, I promise you, if you... I actually know, I know the uh, community you're talking about. I haven't been, but um, I've had a friend who recently, actually within the past month actually, uh, told me about it. Because I know there's one here in Florida... And then there's also a, a community in upstate New York in Lilydale, um, and it literally is a community of nothing but mediums and psychics. But I'm not going to get into that particular one because there are a lot of debates and stuff that I want to bring into these lives. I'm just kind of slightly nervous because... I sometimes question stuff, and I guess some people could take it as, like, are you talking about the symbol on my head? The symbol? It's a rune. Um, but the Eye of Homsis is what I have around my neck, and that's the hand with the eye in the middle of it. And then, um, this one is, uh, Thorn, and the other one that I have on my head is, I want to pronounce this wrong, I'm so gonna pronounce, um, I'm gonna, it's a rune, and I'm gonna pronounce the name wrong, so I'm not even gonna try, but it stands for protection and support, but, um, Anyways, um, yeah, the spiritual day challenge and the visualization thing, I'm, I'm trying to find techniques and the point of these videos is to also break the stereotype of 
well, what people think witches are or what they think magic is because especially in recent years um the aesthetic the aesthetic to the craft or witchcraft um and also for anybody who does see these videos i do not always say witchcraft because i'm so used to talking about it with my friends and other people i just say the craft I'm not talking about the movie. If I do talk about the movie, I will actually say The Craft, the movie. Um, that has confused some people before. No, 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 you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Keep interrupting, promise. Um, but, with that, it's I'm trying to show people that being a witch is not what... And it's kind of funny that I say that because I'm, I, I have paint on my face like this. But... You don't have to claim to be a witch, or you don't have to step out of your religious comfort zones to be able to practice magic, because we do magic. Everybody on this earth does some type of magic every single day without knowing it. They don't, but coffee, for example. What are you doing with coffee? Why do most people drink coffee? To bring them to life. To wake them up in the morning time, and to get their brain going, right? Okay, well, what are you... What is coffee, right? Let's think about this. What is coffee? It's ground coffee coffee seeds, or coffee beans, right? Ground beans. But you're putting that in something, and then you're adding hot water to it to turn it into a liquid. So technically, in a way, it's kind of alchemy, but that's magic. Because you are intentionally, you intentionally wake up every single morning at a certain time. And normally, how I see most adults... The first thing they do, besides use the bathroom, is either start making the coffee, or the coffee pot's already started making it, and you're waiting for your cup. That is a ritual. Why is that a ritual, you say? Because that is something that you do every single day. That's a ritual. That's all a ritual is. Basically, it's something that is organized, and it's something that you do repeatedly. Um... So, well, at least that's how I say what a ritual is. Um, me, for example, what I do, I wake up at 6 a.m. every morning, normally every morning, 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m., and then I watch my shows that came on the night before. Um, about an hour before 9 o'clock, around 8-something, I'll jump in the shower. After I get out of the shower, if I feel like it, I'll do this. And for the people that don't know, this, everything that you see... Or everything that you will see, the look, makeup wise, necklaces, everything that I do and wear, there is a reason. I may not always voice what those reasons are, but there are a reason. They're not just for looks. I do this for a purpose. But with that, it's also because I have, for the people that don't know this, I have um, a lot of mental health stuff going on. And it's my way, because I do have a lot of anxiety, so this is my way of kind of, basically, in a way, ritualistically getting into that state of you're about to go do this live, you will be confident, your self-doubt won't kick in, and it has helped. Um, I have an alarm set, and I know, and honestly, by now, since I've been doing it since the second week of October, waking up like that, I don't even need my alarm set. Most days, I'm already up at 6 o'clock. Like, this morning, I actually woke up at 5 for some weird reason. I woke up at 5. Wide awake, went back to sleep, then woke up, I think, at like 7-ish. Um, off and on. But it's helped. On top of that, I have to bring everything that I use that doesn't normally stay here, like my crystals. Most of my crystals that I have right here, they actually go up front on my little um, crystal garden slash altar that I have. Um, oh yes, I will actually bring up some of that. I've been talking about, um, some shows that I normally do on Thursday, but I will, since I have new viewers, I'll talk about some of the stuff that I've, uh, realized after this, but I turn the lights on, I set this up, my background, um, I set my altar up over there, I turn on the altar lights that I have for over there, so there are straight up rituals that I do every single day to get me in the right mind state of doing these, and there will be some days where I come on here and I'm completely out of it and completely, like, not really here, and I will apologize in advance for that because, like I said, I do have mental health stuff that I'm working on. 
So, that being stated, um, not really going to go into all of them, but I do have stuff. So, I do, I will, I do and I will have my good days and my good weeks, and then I'll have my low days and my low weeks. And you'll be able to know. Trust me, you, you'll understand it. But I did want to say that just in advance. Now, for anybody who is joining me or watching this out of another group, um, if you would like, I will post the link to this to the actual page that this is coming from. Um, you are more than welcome to come like it, and it is Fire Lotus the Witch. Um, but with that, and like was suggested, the Supernatural show. I like Supernatural, but I I kind of, I didn't keep up with it, so like in order for me to go back and understand everything that's going on, I would have to catch up on like three seasons. But, talking about that, because that's one thing I do love doing. Um, for all you 90s people, what, what, or 80s people, um, The Craft, the remake, is happening, um, I have posted some stuff, uh, yesterday, I think it's yesterday, yesterday, day before yesterday, from the actual set, I'm following one person on, um, an Instagram that, I don't know if they live close to where they're filming this at, or if they are just doing something completely different. I mean, or if they work for the production company, but there are some behind the scenes. Other than that, not much is really being talked about it. Um, we have the original, or the witches now, they've done, as far as I know, they've casted the majority of it all. It is supposed to be, um, they're speculating that it should be around uh, probably October maybe summer of 2020 next year when it's supposed to be released. Um, with that, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Buffy the Vampire series is supposed to be coming back. Yeah, I know it is the last season of The Supernatural, but I will state they're kind of running out of things to do in that show. Like, they've literally almost done everything that you could think of. But, um, with that being stated, I'm pretty sure they will have a spinoff of that show somehow. With that being stated, Charmed, the original... Oh, yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is supposed to be coming back to TV. It was actually supposed to be and talked about this year, but it looks like it's actually going to be sometime next year. But, yes, the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer is coming back. It will not have the original Buffy in it, but she has blessed everybody in this new show. Um, there was some slight controversy behind the woman that they have picked to do Buffy, and this is a very stupid reason. What I mean by what I just said, the stupid reason, I think it's stupid that there's drama behind this, and the reason that is, is because, oh, I should have looked this up because I don't want to step on anybody's toes. She's not Caucasian. There we go, I'll say it. Um... I don't know what exactly, because I haven't, like, actually, like, looked into her or everything, but she's not Caucasian, so a lot of people had, again, that's the stupid part that people reacted in a negative way towards this, but, you know, they had some negative reactions. Well, the original Buffy did an interview, and she goes, but th if you watch the original show, that can happen. Buffy, or the, the essence of the Vampire Slayer... As long as it's female, it, it doesn't... The skin color has nothing to do with it. So, that's cool. Um, there are rumors that the original OG Charmed Ones, the original Charmed Ones, are supposed to be doing a... I originally believe it's a four-part mini-movie series with Netflix, but that is still in the works. Hocus Pocus... Excuse me. Hocus Pocus 2, on the other hand is happening and what is so freaking cool and i have proof of this i technically broke the news that hocus pocus 2 was coming back with the original cast members before the original three sanders sisters or the actors of them came out stepped forward and said that they are doing a comeback now with that being stated i do not know the storyline to that at all more important news i believe we all, I'm pretty sure everybody who's watching either has seen and or loves the movie Practical Magic. 
Um, for anyone who doesn't know, it was actually a book before it was adapted to the movie that we know of Practical Magic. The author is Alice Hoffman. Alice Hoffman. I, I have to double check that really quick because um, there's a group of poetry books that... Um, Hoffman. That I use, and the names are almost exactly the same. There we go. Yes, Alice Hoffman. She wrote, it came out the year before last, I believe, or the year after that. They are, she wrote The Rules of Magic. For anyone who has not picked up this book, please, if you can, get your hands on this book before what I'm about to say comes out, because... For one, I personally did not read Practical Magic, the book, due to the fact I saw the movie before I even knew it was a book, so it was kind of hard. But, the rules of magic are the sisters, the aunts. It's their life and their story. And it also reveals that there has only been one Mel Owen witch to be born in that family. Yes, you heard it right, people. There was actually a Mel Owens born. It explains so much about them. I picked that book up. Well, it was a um, it was on my phone actually, but I started reading it. I didn't stop. A week after I finished it, I turned around and reread it. It is phenomenon. But the reason I'm bringing it up is HBO has bought it. They're adapting it to a wait for it. <gasps> TV show. Now, and actually speaking of HBO, to anyone who hasn't seen it, His Dark Materials, I think that's what it's called. It's basically um, The Golden Compass. They have adapted it to a TV show, and it's supposed to be more like the books, less like the movie, and I've been keeping up with it amazing. Also, for the other people... Who, if you haven't, the Charmed that they have out now on the CW, I do want to clarify some things before I say this. It has nothing to do with the original OG Charmed. So basically, going at that show, or if you want to try to watch it for a first time and you haven't watched it before, just think of it as a completely different show. The only thing is the same as they kept the name. They kept Charmed. Everything else about that is completely different than the original Charmed that we know. Now, the reason I was against it at first, I gave it a chance. Just like I'm going to say about Legacies, the spinoff from the uh, Vampire Diaries in the original, or the spinoff from the originals, with The Charmed, with the first season, it, some of their shit, you can tell that it was a new show. You can tell that they were still trying to figure out what the fuck they were doing and where they were going with it. Season 2, on the other hand, has stepped up the game. So... Totally take that. Totally check that out. But yes, um, so on top of that, we have Lizzie McGuire coming back. I'm sorry, I'm about to like fan over the 90s, but we have Lizzie McGuire coming back. We already have Raven Baxter. She already came back. Lizzie McGuire's coming back. Um, with at least I know two, her and her friend Gordo, the original actor of him, he's coming back. We have okay, so Lizzie McGuire, Raven. We have um the remake of The Craft, the new show, um, The Rules of Magic, which is a sequel to, a prequel to Practical Magic. We have Hocus Pocus 2 coming out next year, I believe. So literally 2020s is going to be like reliving the 90s. What? What? Oh, for anybody who is obsessed with Practical Magic, I also wanted to let y'all all a little bombshell if y'all haven't known or keep up with the author. She is currently in the process of writing another Owens book, but guess what? They go back. This is going to be the original Owen, the one that it all started with. She is going to, or she is per currently in the process of trying to write that book. Um, now, with that, the one thing I'm curious about, because I want to find out if this is true, um, or if they're doing it like that, in the original Craft, the movie, they actually had a high priestess 
on set on almost everything that they did. And the reason that was was because they wanted to make the craft, the movie, the craft, they wanted to make it as real and as authentic as possible minus the Hollywood effects. So, it, uh, more interesting facts on that movie. The beach that they shot that scene on is an actual famous beach of pagans. They practice on it. They have been practicing on it for years. So, in that scene where you see where they're invoking the spirit, they're invoking Minnal. Also, by the way, people who don't know, Minnal is an actual god. I did not know that. He is real. Um, he actually, the book that I mentioned yesterday... This one, he's actually in it. Um, I wish I would have remembered that before I did this. That way, like, I could look it up without just mindlessly staring into a book. But, um, yeah, he's actually that was real. But in that particular scene, they asked the priestess if, hey, is it okay if we, like, do this or should we just ask? And she said, no, it should be fine. Just do it. So what I mean by that is, of course, all of it's acting. But in the craft, they did it full on. And not to mention, I know um, one of the women in the craft, Nancy. Nancy? Is it Nancy? I think it was Nancy. Nancy or Bonnie. Um, the goth one, I'll say. She actually does practice. Now, an interesting thing. Let me get these names before I butcher this and before I say this. Um, one of the members from the craft, the original craft movie, actually is a very, is getting up there too with being recognized, but actually reads Oracle, I mean, reads tarot cards. She's really good at it. Um, she has an Instagram, by the way, so if y'all do have an Instagram, you can totally follow her. She gives, um, daily Rochelle. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel from The Craft, um, Rochelle True, she does, uh, tarot readings and tarot cards, so if y'all do have an Instagram, you should totally follow her, because she's just amazing, um, but, yeah, Nancy, Nancy from, um, The Craft, because I'm gonna butcher her real name, um, she is a practitioner, I believe, I could be wrong, so yeah, that's exciting. Basically, the 90s is coming back. Now, to anybody who is curious, I am still taking in people. I want to at least take in two people um, to bring them up under my wing and not teach them, but help them in tune themselves with the magic or how I practice my magic, which is different than most Let's just say this, when, the more you watch my stuff, you'll understand I'm not like all other witches. I'm completely new, but the way that I'm learning and the way that I'm developing my craft, it, from the very first start, it teaches you more to listen to your instincts than what you read in a book. So I am, I plan on, originally I plan on taking on two people up under my wing and then after I pick them, people, um, I'm going to basically what I plan on do, or what I plan on doing is figuring out and learning how that specific person learns things. Because I know, like me, I'm not the type of person in school where I would sit down and just have a person in front of me jotting all this shit out and saying all this shit that doesn't work with me. I'm more one on one. So, and I realized in order to be a great teacher. In anything, you have to be able to understand your students. And to really understand your students, you have to understand how they themselves process information. If you can understand that, then teaching them about magic, they'll be able to pick it up. So, yes, um, just, and if you do see this and you're curious or you're interested, um, message me on this page. Um, if you see this when I've uploaded it to YouTube, comment on my YouTube thing, and then find one of my social media links, which will also be in the video description, and click there and send me a message. With that, I also am going to state that I do do tarot readings and oracle cards and spell work for people, custom spell work, but 
I'm not going to charge you an arm and a leg, and I'm going to do everything I can, a.k.a. the witch's payment, to make sure, you know, we can figure something out. Um, and if you're curious, or if you never heard about the witch's payment, or my definition of the witch's payment, my YouTube page, Fire Lotus the Witch, uh, the live video that I did yesterday where I talked about that, and hair magic are the power that hair has, that our hair has, um, it's up there now. And to anybody else who doesn't or hasn't heard this or is just tuning in late, I do do these Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, and sometime next year, I will be planning a giveaway. I may be planning one sooner, but the one next year, um, it is going to. I know for a fact it's going to have one of the books that I practice that I use in my practice that I don't really read that much anymore. Um, it's going to be one of them, and then it's going to be two custom spell items that I make personally. Um, I don't know what those are going to be yet. I guess it'll depend on who, you know, does it. But yes, there are a lot of things. Um, and all that I ask is if you stumble across this and you like what you hear, please share it or at least send it to a friend. Just get the words out there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I ask with that. Um... For the people who are a little bit curious, I am a witch. I am a spiritual witch. Um, I am not pagan. And the reason that I used to... Now, you will catch me sometimes saying I am pagan, and that's just easier. Because when you say, oh, you're a witch, to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about, nine times out of ten, you get, oh, so you're a Satan worshiper. Or, oh, so you're a Wiccan. No. Um, and the reason that is, and what defines that is... And some people will disagree with me, and you know what, I don't care what I'm about to say, but, or I don't care that they'll disagree. It, one day, and I don't know what brought this on, but one random day, it hit me, why do I not like how worshipping goddesses and gods sound? And I'm like, why does that? And I realized, to me, in my head, when you say you worship a god or a goddess, that's putting them above you. And for one, you're about to say, wait, wait they kind of are because they're defined. They are, but they aren't. And I'm about to explain why. Um, a lot of people, and I've had a lot of debates with this, and I do want to know, if y'all see this, I would love to know what your opinions are if you do work with gods and goddesses. Do you think gods and goddesses recognize and change with the years and the seasons and the decades, basically. In other words, it's almost like, well, no. Basically, what I mean by that is, do you think that some god or all, some or all gods and goddesses are like they were back then, where you have to, you know, do something extreme to get their attention, or do you, or do you think that they've realized, okay, well, in order for us to to stay relevant, we also have to change with them, with the time. Um, now, the reason I said that is because I went to a universal church before, um, to a spiritual meeting, and that was the discussion there. And the person who was leading it was like, no, they don't change, they stay the same. That's why um, the example they used is here recently with Hecate. Hecate has been a very, very popular goddess well if you actually do your research hecate is supposed to be a well not hecate morgana morgan um basically i've been told and originally because i was I, i've always been drawn to the three-faced goddesses um but i was told that due to the fact that i'm a male it would be extremely hard working with hecate or morgan and at first i believed it and then something clicked in my head. Bullshit. Bull, bull, bullshit. I'm sorry. Gods and goddesses. And if you believe that, then that's, that's your belief. But, back to what I was trying to say. I no longer say that I worship gods and goddesses because I don't. I commune with them. And in my head, in a way, the reason I say I commune is because primarily and this is newer to me, but I've been using it, um, I mainly work with my ancestors and my spirit guides. Um, I'm still also discovering my spirit guides, but I know that they're there. Um, but with that, 
I don't know. I didn't like the word. I didn't like how it pictured in my head. Oh, you worship them, which means you... Basically, it's like we can't live without them or anything like that. And no, I be, I commune with them. I, In a way, I see them equal. Not as I'm up there and divine with them, because I'm not. But at the same time, a lot of the concepts and constructions of religious views and spiritual views, you always have to remember that anything biblical or anything in history, when it comes to a god or a goddess, it was written by a human. What does that mean? That means that... We experience stuff that the gods and goddesses, they're above. And what I mean by that is the ego, you know, the, the selfishness, the all that stuff. All that stuff, gods, goddesses, lords and ladies and spirits, they don't, they don't see the world like that. They're above that. They're, they no longer have those human restraints restraining them down. And that's the reason that I say this, and I know it's true, um... Well, to me, it's true. With that, it's like when you're practicing or you're doing a spell or a ritual and you're reading from a book and you fumble on your words, don't stop what you're doing. Don't stop the entire ritual and get frustrated and start all over again because they understand that we are imperfectly perfect humans. Are We are perfectly imperfect humans. There we go. And actually what you're supposed to do when it comes to that is you're supposed to laugh. Why? Because the gods and goddesses, lords, ladies, and spirits, and ancestors, and whatever else you want to call upon, they don't take it as serious as you do. Now, with that being stated, there is a difference. Now, if you start trying to summon stuff or work with stuff, because I do believe that there are negative things out there. Now, what I mean by that is, and I've had this conversation with multiple people, the word demon. I hate using that word because when you use it, most people automatically attune it with Hold that thought really quick. It sounds like somebody just pulled up at my house and I don't recognize the sound to it. Okay, sorry about that. Apparently my neighbors are having work done that I didn't know, so there's a bunch of people outside. But, um, oh, I have to get my train of thought too. I see, where was I? Magic, working with ancestors, gods and goddesses. Where was I going with this? Ah, uh, okay, well, my mind just went blank, so... I've also, I think I've been live for like two hours now. Um, and the only reason I state that is because I do use my hotspot to download the live so I can upload it to YouTube. So, but with that being stated, um, since it is almost two hours, if for any reason it's not uploaded by tonight, it will be tomorrow because um, I will not be here at my house. I'm going into town tomorrow. So I will have hot, uh, I'll have Wi-Fi. So I'll be able to definitely upload it from there. Um, but yes, again, like I said before, I commune. I don't worship. That is just me. Um, and I'm a witch. And the reason I just say I'm a witch and I'm a spiritualist, I'm not even religious, as in I believe that there are truths in all religions, but I don't believe all religions are true. And not every word in that is true. Um... And the reason I say I'm spiritual is because literally the only, I want to know why. I want to know why we're here. I want to know why. And if I can leave, if you can, if I can leave you with anything today, for one, always remember this, trust your instincts and your, listen to your intuition today. Those techniques that I suggested will also strengthen this, but If I could leave you with anything, it is to, for one, before you react to something, if, if a, say you are practicing Wiccan or a witch, 
and a Christian comes up to you or something like that. Somebody like that comes up to you and they want to pray for you or something like that. What I'm trying to say is before you automatically judge, try to take yourself out of that situation and look at it as a third party. And the reason I'm saying this is basically what I'm saying is learn to let go of your ego and change your perspective to try to sh see what they're seeing. Um, I've been doing this, especially this year, um, and more and more, and it's helping me so much because it has, you do not know how many conversations, arguments, miscommunications that has saved me from, from actually stopping and being like, wait, before I respond to this, let me try to see w how this person's seeing that, you know? And it, it, it helps, especially with religion. It helps with spirituality. It helps with being gay. It helps with all of that. In order to truly... For one, we'll, we will never know what other people go through in their lives. That's just us. I mean, that's just that's how it is. But you can't judge somebody on what you see first. And I've learned that. I still do it. We all do it. We're all, like I said before, we're all perfectly imperfect humans. We're going to do stupid shit. Um, but I am. I, I, I'm even catching myself. If I'm talking to somebody and there's, say, there's a YouTuber or a movie or a TV show or an actor or an actress that I don't like and I start to say something that would be shady or something like that, I'll stop myself and be like, wait, no. The only reason I'm doing this is because, and now with that, what I also wanted to state that a lot of the times if you meet somebody or if you see somebody and they piss you off or they do something that you don't like or you get angry at them for something that you don't really realize it or you get jealous of them. The reason that is, and a lot of the times if you get pissed off at somebody or if somebody acts a certain way. Not all the times, but a lot of the times, the reason you don't like that person, it has nothing to do with the person. You're seeing a reflection of an aspect of you in that person. And that's one of the reasons that you don't like them. Now, what I mean by that is, perfect example, when I first started my YouTube page and actually posting videos on there, all I had were all these other YouTubers that have been doing this for like four, five, ten years. And I was saying, okay, well, obviously I'm not doing something right because I'm not getting the response that everybody else is getting out of. And if you look at my other videos, you can totally tell because I've changed spots of where I film and all the other stuff. I was overthinking it and I was comparing myself, my situation, and my life, and my page, and my content to theirs. That is the damn demon and devil of freaking social media. But... And once I realized, wait, I literally took myself back out of the situation, and I had multiple people tell me this too, which is, I keep saying, and it's so weird because I'll give great advice, but I never take my own advice, and then something comes up, and the advice that I gave was basically the lesson that I just learned. Um, and what that, what I mean by that is, especially if you do have an Instagram, or if you are practicing witch, or if you're about to be, or if you're new to it, stay the fuck off of social media. Because the last thing you need to do is start going on there and you see all these people, all these practitioners, and all these other people that's posting all this glorious, magical stuff. And you're like, well, wait, none of my stuff looks like that, so it's not going to work. No, that's bullshit. Stay away from social media. Pinterest, though, is really, really good. I will swear it, Pinterest is really good. Now, before you do uh, on Pinterest, before you start writing any of the symbols or sigils down or anything like that, do your research on some of them, okay? <laughs> do your research. I personally, I do. I do as much research on any symbols... Now, with that being stated, and I said I was going to stop this, but I'm going to keep going, fuck it. Um, with that being stated... Tattoos, if you are new or if you are literally a normal person and you're just thinking about getting a spiritual tattoo, before you get that tattoo, think about what you're doing. Think about the symbol. My symbol, the symbol that I've always used and been drawn to, is the pinnacle or pentagram, the pentagram and the floral de lis. 
I have tattoos. Example A. Just keep swimming. It's an anchor and it has Dory saying, just keep swimming. That tattoo right there saved my life in so many times. But, when you get a tattoo of a symbol, honestly, it can be magical or non-magical, you are binding that, literally binding due to the simple fact, unless you're going to get through laser remove or you get it cut off, you can't remove that tattoo. You are binding that symbol and the meaning of that symbol to your flesh. So, like I've stated, I've been practicing the craft for 16 plus years, or 16 going on plus, um, and I still have not got a pentagram tattooed on me. And I honestly don't even know if I will. I'm going to get a flutter to lease tattooed on me, but I don't know about a pentagram. And that's just because I know that I'll always be a witch until the day that I die, but I also know I don't have to have a pentagram to display that. And it's kind of contradicting my other self because I've talked about before one of the reasons that I don't really hide my pentagram is because it's my way of celebrating all the people. Now, before you think what I'm about to say, all the people that were misjudged and crucified and. Well, the Crusades and all that other stuff. All the people throughout history that has been damned or ostracized. There we go. Ostracized for breaking the social norm. For the the people that didn't follow the Puritan way. I'm not saying they're all, they all practice witchcraft. It has nothing to do with that. The reason that I wear this proudly, now there are some few occasions to where I will respectively put it in my shirt, but nine times out of ten, I flaunt it. Now there's two reasons. For one, like I just said, to celebrate everybody throughout history who has been ostracized just by being themselves, but the most importantly, it is to actually educate the uneducated, especially considering I've worked at convenience stores before. And you get a lot of people in there. Well, I've worked in a lot of country, country, small town places. And seeing this, I did have a lot of people ask me, oh, you're a Satan worshiper and stuff like that. But instead of automatically, you know, aggressively going after them, I said no. And I educated them. Was I trying to convert them? No. Fuck no. Fuck, fuck, no, 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 no. But I would rather them at least know that, okay, that symbol is not associated with the devil and see y'all to anybody who wears symbols like this i don't care if you're doing it just for the aesthetic of it or doing it because it's the new social trend if you wear spiritual necklaces spiritual symbols you don't have to practice it's true you don't have to be a witch to wear a pentagram but at least know what those symbols represent in that culture, in that religion, or in that spiritual path. That way, if somebody does come up to you and ask you, why are you wearing this, or what does that mean, even though you don't practice it or follow it, you're still going to educate them on the right, the, the right knowledge about that symbol. That is what people are not doing this day and age, and we need to, because... All of these symbols that we wear, pentagrams, florodolis, all of them, all these magical symbols, they have been around for eons. Okay, not eons, but they have been around a very long time. And with that, due to the fact that, for the perfect example, the cross, due to the fact that how popular the church and everything is, the cross is not just Christian. The crucifix may be just Christian, but the cross itself is not it, it it represents the four elements but what i mean by that is this pentagram or a cross itself they themselves have power behind them just because there are so many people throughout human existence who have put faith and who have worn them for protection or worn them for this certain way and you have to think about it. If you have a certain amount of people and stuff like this believing over and over and over and over and over again that this symbol is protective, it literally becomes protection. Protective. Um, now, is, is that to say if I have this pentagram on and I get shot by a gun, is that going to stop a bullet? Fuck no. 
And it doesn't, when it comes to symbols or necklaces and charms, it doesn't literally mean I'm safe from every single thing. What it means is spiritually, I am protected. Spiritually, I know that I could go around certain people or go certain places and be perfectly okay. Now, there are other things. Speaking of that, um, I did want to say something. And actually, the one of the books, she uh, states it in here. This is one of the books that I did my review on yesterday by Kate West. It is um, The Real Witch's Book of Spells and Rituals. With that... I wanted to say for the people that drive cars, um, I do not, I don't have my license, so. But, I wanted to let y'all know on this, because she actually did something, and this goes to every aspect of the craft or magic. She stated in there, when you do a protection on a car, you need to be very, 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 very careful with how you do it. And you're probably thinking, why? It's a protective car, hmm? If you protect your car too well, what happens if you're going down on the interstate and you get in somebody's blind spot and they can't see you due to the protection you put on your car? It can get you into an accident, see? <coughs> and the reason that is important is because that take that aspect with any spell or ritual you do. You have to make sure... Now, I'm not saying, like, sit down and before you even do it, overthink everything. But make sure your intent, make sure the reason you were doing this is, you know, it, it fully gets out there. It's like the whole, that we've heard a thousand times before with genies and stuff, like, be careful with what you wish, magic comes with a price. It's true. You do, when it comes to any type of magic, you do, the one thing I will say, you do have to make sure you are... You get what you're, you, you articulate what you actually want. You have to get that out there and make that very simple. You know, you, you're not going to, I mean, you can, if you really wanted to, you could write a pentagram, I mean, a, a paragraph and send it to the universe. But in most ways, the simplest it can be, basically what I'm saying is trying to try to find, try to find the simplest, but most perfect way of doing something and expressing something. Now, like I said, the more and more I personally believe, the more and more that you work with your ancestors, your spirit guides, or if you are those people that work with a specific goddess or specific god or specific lord or specific lady, um, the more you work with them, the... Not better, but the more you work with them... The communication between you, the better, yeah, the better, the better it gets. It's like having one of the phones back in, like, the 90s where, like, you know the Sprint commercial, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Basically, that if, that's basically what you're doing when you first start talking and reacting and trying to reach out to your ancestors and your spirit guides is you're basically, you're trying to find that perfect connection to where they can send you and you can download knowledge and information, but you also, and they know how to send it to you to where your body, mind, and spirit can also incorporate it and understand what they mean. It takes practice. It's like your body to do anything, to work out, to get muscles, to build your brain, to make you smart. What do you have to do? You have to constantly use it over and over again. To what? Muscle memory. Once you do it over and over again, and, I, and I've said this in all of my lives, once you start going down a spiritual path or a magic path, you literally get to a point to where magic, you don't have to think, it becomes your regular day life. Me and my partner, we've had conversations, we actually had one last week, where he stopped, and he's like, are we actually talking about this? Like, this is just like a normal... You know, what are we having for supper tonight? Conversation. And I said, well, yeah, it is. It's normal because practicing magic or becoming a practitioner, it's not just a craft. It literally becomes your way of life. You start doing things that your body basically, your muscles themselves remembered before your body even reacts to it or your brain reacts to it. Um, I do it all the time. I'll pick up crystals. Um... 
or different types of stones. I won't know why, but I'll, like, uh, for example, this morning, I picked up rose quartz for some reason, and I stuck it in my pocket. And I still, right now, I don't know why, but I know by the end of the day, I'll figure out why I needed this one. Um, I do the same thing with the necklaces that I wear. Um, I, I just randomly have a feeling, and honestly, how I am with my craft now, that's how I've become. I won't... You know, I'm not the witch who will set aside three Sundays four months from now on the perfect day of the perfect year, the perfect lunar cycle. There are people that do that, and it works for them, and that's great, but it doesn't work for me. And I've realized that finding who you are in the craft, it's honestly the, the, the number one thing I'm going to say is throw out every single thing you were ever told or taught in a book. Throw it out and begin again. Because there was an issue. Which I believe that it's kind of, it's gotten better. But when I first started practicing and started looking for books, there are a lot of authors out there. Most of them are from a strict, specific path. But there are authors out there who state that if you do not do it, like it states in the book, it's not going to work. And that's bullshit. I cannot express that more. That is bullshit. Now with that, it also goes with tools. For example, this is a um, multiple tool thing that I made, but I also use it as a wand. Um, I made this instead of, you know, going out and buying stuff. What I mean by that is you don't have to have... All this fancy, fancy stuff. You don't have to have a $355 athame. You can use a butter knife. It, it, it's all about your intention, especially when it comes to tools. Now, with me being saying that, yes, I do have a lot of stuff, but I've been practicing for a while and I collect. Honestly, if you want to, for all the people who do want to know how I've gotten so much stuff, you know how, like, a lot of people with TV shows and movies and stuff, they'll collect stuff from that? Yeah. When I say that I am a witch and I do it every day, from the very moment that I, did, that I realized this is who I am and this is what I was doing, everything that I wind up primarily investing in or really spending money on, it, some way, shape, or form, it's either stuff to do with my art or photography, or it has to do with the craft, my craft. Whether that be herbs, whether that be candles, whether that be this, whether that be that. With that, you do not have to have all these tall pillar candles and all these special candles. Literally, if you're a budget, like I am, and there ain't nothing wrong with being a budget witch. Honestly, I believe we kind of have some fun with the budgets because of all the creative new things that we find. Um, family Dollar, if y'all have a Family Dollar where you live. I don't know about Dollar General. I think, I think they do too. But Family Dollar and Dollar Tree, go to their candle section. And I know uh, Family Dollar specifically, they have, it's called an emergency candles. And it's a box for a dollar of six white pillar candles. And they're about... And they're about that big. From like the crystal up. They're about that big. And they're perfect for spells. I literally, when I worked there, I bought like 20 bucks worth of them. And that's what I would use. Because, you know, you... And for one, a white candle can... A white candle can substitute for any other color of candle. You can also use a quartz crystal to substitute. Substitute. A colored candle or a candle or another crystal there are there is a technique behind that but I ain't getting into that that'll be another video but um yeah thank y'all so much for everybody who has joined me um who has commented either on here or in a watch party thank you so much for liking and um yeah like I said um to anybody who does view this Please share it, send it to one of your friends. When I mean share it, you don't have to share it on your profile or your page. Send it to a friend. Um, email it to somebody. Just get it out there, please. Um, if you like what you hear, also. Um, with that, I do these Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, every week. 
Um, and if for some reason I don't, I will notify everybody. Um, to anybody who doesn't use a Facebook, um, which if you don't have a Facebook, I don't know how you're doing this now. But anyways, um, I upload all of these, all the lives that I do on here. I normally upload those to my YouTube page, which is also Fire Lotus the Witch. And to anybody who has an Instagram, because I also share content on there, I have an Instagram, which is fire underscore lotus underscore the underscore witch. Um, so yeah, and I also have a Twitter, and I believe my Twitter name is uh, fire lotus witch, because I couldn't put the, so it's like fire lotus witch. But yeah, um, thank you so much, and thank y'all all for joining me, and everybody who asked questions and brought up stuff, and again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Literally, if it wasn't for y'all, I would not be doing these. Um, okay, I probably would, but I would just be awkward and staring at a phone. Um, and not talking to anybody. But, anyways, thank you very much. And, um, without further ado, I will let everybody go. I hope y'all have a magical morning, noon, and or night. I don't know your life. So. But, yeah, without that being said, peace.